Sure. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, in this uh, week, in the chapter five, I'm going to present the uh, many ways to make maps with R, as many things usually is in R that a lot of ways can be done to achieve something, which is good. But for me, it's a bit overwhelming actually, uh, because I haven't been into um, use visual data before, and then there are a lot of options, but nice to know that there are options uh, nevertheless. So there are four packages that can be used to make maps with R. Um, so they ordered in the chat in the book, it is ordered um, like so, ggplot2, leaflet, map view, and dmap. But I would argue that it's actually better to order it like ggplot2, dmap, leaflet, and map, map view, because it seems that ggplot2 and dmap is really good, or at least um, more suitable for um, static maps for publication in journal articles or any static mediums, whereas Leaflet and Matthew is really for interactive uh, map. And I think looking at um, the plot results, it seems that Matthew is like a high level API for Leaflet. Um, yes. Because true. they, yeah, yeah, they look very similar. Uh, but yeah, if you it is really built on top of map view. If you um, look at the structure of a map view object, you can see that the first slot, or the, I think the second slot, is the is the leaflet uh, map actually. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah. So my suspicion is correct. All right. So, well, I would say that the maps. Uh, being created in the chapter is rather simple. Um, what is what's the difference is that as long as we pass um, the shape object is data, for example, in this ggplot object, then we can create maps. But we have to add, we have to use geom sf to actually plot the polygons and. Um, whatever value that we want to map within the polygons. So I would say at this point, it's rather okay. And I think it's also nice that by using one line, we can actually make um, the CG plot to maps to be interactive. Though, according to my limited experience, yeah, I, I don't really think it's um, like this ggplotly um, type map or any plot is good enough because they seem quite rough. I'm not entirely sure that it's ready for publication. Maybe, uh, well, what I've seen so far and what I have done is really um, sort of the basic and maybe can be highly optimized, but I think compared to the real interactive packages like leaflet or a map view, those two really blows this one off the waters. But yeah. well, with um, you can you can make more uh, much more uh, professional looking maps if you want. There's a the chapter here actually teaches the basic uh, stuff. Yeah. And you can do yeah. much more. You can also add several layers on top of each other. Uh, you, you, it's mm -hmm. here we always work with just one layer, but you could also add uh, multiple objects on top of each other. And it is with just another geom sf plus geom sf. And each mm -hmm. time, uh, put the data object then in there and not in the ggplot uh, function mm -hmm. at the beginning. But so, does, uh, does that apply to the interactive side of the ggplot too, or no, just no, no, the static no. side? Yeah, yeah, just the, I meant the static yeah. maps, how they yeah. can be 
further yeah, optimized sure. yeah you, you can uh, do a lot with them yes for the interactive view you're right the plotly is is rather rough yeah that's right it, it's not the same um I, I think there are other options too but i'm not too familiar with the interactive uh, maps section but i mean for a quick look for a quick uh browsing through the maps or the values i think it's fine mm -hmm. uh, but not really something that i would use especially that there's map view well yes so, of course yes yeah so um yeah, and then for leaflet, well, I, uh, I finally know what's the name of the package that create this kind of map because I think I see it everywhere. Uh, and I think one thing that is very important to understand, um, oh, I don't know what's going on with the rendering, but anyway, um, we have to transform the coordinate reference system to EPSG code uh, 4326. And there is a must apparently. Um, and well, I do quite like that the leaflet, even though it is proposed, but it's proposed in the ggplot-like um, manner, I guess, in which you are adding layers of data or geoms or object um, and then you can yes. add complexity yes it's layers so, also with layers so you can need to yeah yeah, yeah. yeah the, I do uh, like yes it, but... yes in map view you don't have to do the transformation yourself it does a little this it is indeed map view tries to make it a bit easier to use leaflet mm -hmm. And yes, yeah, so well, the zoom is not very good, but uh, um, yeah, we can also add this inset as a mini map to show where actually uh, the region that we're zooming in is located. And by just adding this uh, simple one liner. And I mean, with map view, I think it's sort of. Um, cheating well of course not cheating in that sense but uh i just find it very simple um and it looks similar to leaflet and as you mentioned it is indeed built on top of leaflet so i think it's nice to have this uh but then when it comes to customization and then this becomes a bit at least not as intuitive as leaflet because now it seems that they it has well it, based on my first impression um that there seems to be um, a lot of arguments that can be put into the uh, map view uh, function whereas um i think the leaflet grammar of course is a bit more for both but i Maybe because I'm also a bit more used to ggplot2, I can appreciate that kind of repository compared to having a lot of arguments in the function. Mm -hmm. But to each their own, I guess. And by the way, I'm I'm very curious how you made these slides because it's really interesting. To see the code at the left and but, the plots at the right, yes. Oh yeah, I'm using the um, a Quarto presentation. I think it's oh. based on the Refill GS. Just saw it yesterday uh, because I thought that this chapter has a lot of codes, and I don't want to copy paste uh, every time. But yeah, okay. it is it is very intuitive to use. Very intuitive. Yeah, um, interesting. Yeah, thanks. And the uh, and the post said. Um, and the post-it uh, block has a lot extensive documentation, so it helps. I'll set, share the link later. Okay. All right. And then, um, yeah, for adding minimap to the map view, it's using the same uh, function from leaflet. Uh, because, well, as I said, the leaflet, this map view 
is built on top of a, a leaflet uh, package. So I guess there are a lot of functions from the leaflet package that can also be used for the map view. And I think this is uh, what is nice is that with map view, we can make um, a side by side plots and to make it a bit uh, uh, more obvious that this is what it meant by the side by side plots in which so I guess this is like um, a picture uh, where you have the slider and on the left you have this picture before the filter and the right before after the filter and then you see the color or the picture changes but here so the idea is that um, on the left you have a value let's say from 10 years ago and on the right is the value from the current period and then by um, by moving the slider then you can actually see the transition or the um, change um, between the two time window oh, if, that's it's really great change. yeah and well looking at the um yeah, looking at the syntax, I, I was just a bit blown that at how simple it is um, to make this uh, kind of visualization. Although it, I guess it can also be a bit annoying if you want to see the changes by sliding uh, the slider all the time, which I guess then that is also why this leasing package uh, comes into play because now you can actually see uh, the two variables from the different period of time side by side. And uh, what you do on the uh, left, so he, I'm pointing on the left now and on the right. Um, um, well, I don't think it's projected to the same area. Well, anyway. Yes, um, it's yeah. okay. Okay, yeah. Um, anyway, so if I zoom in on the left, and then you can see it's actually also zooming into the uh, more or less. Um, oh, this is what I don't really like um, the pop ups. But anyway, yeah, so what you can do, what you did on the left, it will also be reflected on the right panel and vice versa. And one thing that I haven't said before is that by clicking into this uh, one of the polygon then you can also see the value from other variables for the respective polygon and i think that it's nice although it can be a bit uh, overwhelming but i'm sure there would be there should be a way to restrict what should be shown in the pop-ups. Yeah, I think there is a way in map view to do that uh, indeed. And um, the synchronized maps and the side-by-side -side maps, I'm pretty sure you can do it both with leaflet objects as with map view objects, because mm -hmm. map view is actually just a wrapper around the leaflet object. Yeah. All right, and then for tmap, um... Yeah, so I guess that there are um, two modes for Tmap, the plot mode and view mode. So um, to my understanding, it seems that if you want to make static maps like on the right, then we have to uh, call or we have to use the plot. Um, well, it's the default. Have, yeah, it is the default, right? Um, for, to show the static maps and view for an in, sort of an interactive team map, I, I believe. And the syntax would be well, using shape to show all of the, I think yeah, by shape is actually just like ggplot in which it only initiate the blank canvas and then all of this um, all of the polygons will only be displayed 
once you call this uh, polygons. And then this uh, variable that you put inside the polygons function is the one that is used to color the areas within the polygon. Um, yeah. And the book also shows uh, four ways to show a point data. Um, and one thing that is uh, bugging me a bit is that so the scaling of the points somehow the author uses a different um, value or different way to transform the size i still don't understand why um but i, I guess it's because those packages do something behind the screens themselves um I, I maybe guess. maybe but it's just when i when i when i saw it it's like hmm, okay it's weird but sure i mean we can't really interpret size anyway but sure uh, yeah, yeah so, i um, think yeah i think the author wants to scale it a bit more in the same way visually Mm -hmm. uh, which you would do probably if you would uh, yeah. just take one package independently. Um, but indeed, it, it's uh, striking that it's different between the different packages to just get more or less the same uh, experience. Yeah. Yes. And I really wonder, um, you know, if all these different um, things that is going on underneath and people interpret things based on size and then the size of the points across the packages are really different even though it's maybe based on the same values i think it's a bit problematic but i don't know well, but I'm anyway sure. uh, sure. yeah well good um yeah so well this is the syntax for the ggplot2 and as you can see um, we're passing on the um, shape object, and then here with the GMSF, uh, we're actually uh, feeding the points here, and that is why um, you're seeing points. Um, and then the color, and then we can designate the color as well as the size of the points. So, um, so it is not geom points that we are using. Uh, to show what's on the right. And now here on lift, we've lifted now, but I think it's a bit uh, complicated to my untrained uh, mind. But again, I think the layer syntax do make sense. Uh, that first we initiate, initiate um, the leaflet uh, function by passing the shape object and then we add the tiles and the tiles is actually the background the map um, in the background of this um, map so it's it, so it's the layout of the well in this example of the african continent and then on top of it we can add the circles which is the data that we are actually want to show um, and then we add the uh, properties that we want to um, show here. And I think what is quite interesting is the use of uh, tilde uh, before the variables, which has been which has been shown in the previous examples of leaflet. But um, I think it may be like a sort of a catch. Um, if I'm going to use leaf flat in, leaf flat in the future um, to remember to you know, just to be just to remind myself of if something goes wrong, maybe I should have used added tilde in front of the uh, variable name. Um, I'm not entirely sure why it does that. Sort of like facet uh, wrap uh, where you also add tilde before. The variable name, but uh, 
Yeah, and the documentation, it says it can be a vector of, of values, or it can also be a one-sided formula. So this is just the formula no ah. notation in R with the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the formula. And in this case, it just uh, accepts a one-sided formula. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, so I guess it's the one, the factor. And then this is a formula example, but yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now with Matthew, oof, it's very simple. Um, just passing the shape object, um, and then the color and the size. That's it. Uh, yeah, with no added uh, things. So. I quite like Matthew at this point. Um, yeah, and then finally for the team app, and here, if you notice now the team app is interactive, it's because I use the team app mode view, and um, to show the points, then we use uh, tm dots, and to show to designate what variable that we actually want to display, then we um, input a character of the variable name, and then we can also um, add this to adjust the size of the text and the color of the and the color palette of the point. And then for raster, um, yeah, I would say it's um, a sort of um okay um that we mm -hmm. well yeah yeah I, for the gg plots uh, approach i'm not too convinced this is really best practice uh, i was a bit no. surprised because um in one of the first chapters if i'm no um you know it was actually i think in the terra chapter anyway um to plot a spot raster in one of the previous chapters it was shown that you can use tidy terra um in combination with ggplot2 so tidy terra the package it provides a geom spot raster function which is really um crafted to use the spot raster object from Terra, and it plots a raster uh, inside ggplots um, graph. While here, what we are actually doing is converting uh, the raster to points with each point, its own set of point coordinates, which is not as efficient as a raster object because a raster is just a, a mm. matrix of values. It defines its uh, resolution and its extent. Um, and so what is done then here with geom raster, it is actually a special form of the geom tile uh, function in ggplot2, which ah. uh, makes, which assigns the value of um, yeah, of points, for example, to to um, surfaces, to rectangular surfaces. Um, so you actually go to points here and then plot it as tiles. That was this, that's what's done here. But but frankly, I don't know how Geom Spat Raster works behind the scenes. Maybe it does something like that. It could be, but anyhow, this feels a bit um yeah heavy because you are converting a raster object to a vector object and then plot it in a way that it again resembles uh raster and of course the visual is okay but i think that would be a rather heavy operation for larger rasters and i've seen that the geom spot raster from tidy terra also samples um raster cells for very large rasters just for the visualization mm -hmm. okay because otherwise it will slow down um the plotting mm. so that's just a remark um anyhow it's uh, 
creative way of doing this. It's, it, it works, but um, I don't think yeah, it's mean, the best approach. Here is a very small example. I guess that's why it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, compared to the one from TMAP, um, I think some more for a like and like um, comparison. Uh, yeah. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's just rather different that here you can actually see um, like the boxes. Whereas mm -hmm. here in the ggplot2, it's not very, not so yeah. much. It's because the scale here is continuous while it is has been bent by mm -hmm. default, uh, apparently in the tmap uh, function. So it has been put into uh, a small set of categories, which which makes uh, uh, for a scale that is just it has just I think mm. four or five uh, classes mm. levels, and so you you get this pattern. But I presume that you can configure that. I I, I, okay. I assume this is just the default to do this. Well, it's nice. I think it, it also. Uh, shows mm -hmm. right away where are the higher and the lower zones, but oh. uh, I think you, I, I expect you can tune this. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, but I think it's important to realize that the defaults are different across these packages. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then. Yeah, and uh, I, I think this is another, um, perhaps. Not not the best practice for nowadays because this one converts the Terra object to the raster object. Yeah, with this one you mean, right? Yeah, and it uses the raster package anyway, which you don't need uh, at least not anymore. But yeah, the book is recent, and so I think it's been there for a few years already. The 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 approaches to use Terra objects, so spot raster objects in leaflet and map view directly. So you can do that. Hmm. So you don't okay. have to convert what's going on. That's what's going on here with the raster brick uh, function. Right. It converts the yeah. spot raster to an older format format actually. So Terra is the is mm. the um, Follow up uh, of the roster package. It's the same author, so the author of the roster package has created the Terra package as a new way of using rosters in uh, R. And uh, it, that's a good point for the book. Is that it, indeed in the previous chapters it just provides or presents the Terra package. So it's the that's the modern one. Mm -hmm. But here it converts back to the roster object, which isn't needed at least not anymore. Hmm. A bit confusing though, no? Okay. Um, yeah, and then yeah, I wonder what then does the oh okay for the Matthew. Yeah, yes, it's the same. Actually it's passes the, same. the yeah, passes the rasterized. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well uh, it's it's not rasterized, it just converted to another uh, um, another the older format, yeah. The older format for a raster object in R, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but they are nice uh, graphs, I think, uh, maps. Yeah. Yes, it does look nice, but I mean, uh, well, when they mention about efficiency, especially if you're loading it to, if you're putting it on the web, where speed is quite important, then yeah, I guess that would be one way to optimize the code. I guess um, yeah. Anyway, so that is all. Um, I think from my first impression, so a huge disclaimer that I've never used any of this package in my professional work, but um, at least so far I can see that. If you want to use, if you want to make maps for static medium like journal articles, Tmap or ggplot2 is really good. Uh, but I mean, for I think Tmap seems to be well, it does look better compared to 
maps created by Plotu, but maybe that's a very personal opinion. And for interactive medium, I find MapView is very easy to create maps and Leaflet is just um, a very complicated MapView the other way around. So, but it's highly customizable and um, because it is mostly built based on JavaScript, it is also very compatible with Shiny. So if you want to make um, interactive um, maps that is super fancy, I guess Leaflet is the way to go. So, um, yes, um, that's it. Is there any question? Questions? Um, perhaps, perhaps um, we can add that um, Terra, for example, it also has uh, its method for the base R plot function. So just in R, you have the function plot to make very neat graphs. Um, and yeah. Terra uses it as well. Yeah. So you can just use plots and pass a, pass a Terra object of spot, spot raster or spot vector um, to the plot function and it will uh, make the plot. And you can also add multiple layers like in the usual uh, way of using the plot function in R. Yeah. But okay. indeed, uh, I do agree that the tmap function has quite professional defaults in, in rendering a map. And this is because it is really designed to make maps while ggplot2, um, it has to be tweaked because it is a package primarily to make graphs. And of course, a map is also a sort of graph, but you need to tweak the theme. Perhaps you need to move the legends, that sort of stuff. But on the other hand, it's, it's cool that you can do it with ggplot2 in a very neat way, but you have to customize. But for yeah, I people, guess, yeah. I guess for people who are already used to ggplot2 and they want to make maps, it would be a good first entry. Uh, but I mean, well, with MapView, it seems that it looks very, very simple to make maps, uh, at least with the example in the uh, chapter, at least. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I think it's nice to have all of these options. Yes, I found it a very pleasant chapter to read because indeed you have these comparisons. It was interesting to see several functions. I also learned quite a lot uh, from this chapter, especially the side by side and this, the leaf sync approaches. Yes, uh, nice. Uh, it was also yeah, quite it very cool. It was also written quite, quite uh, consistently uh, to compare uh, the packages. Well, um, yeah, that is all. So, uh, have you typed N or?